Okay, so here is the next part of this video. Hopefully it'll be the last part, as I don't want to spend my entire Father's Day making videos. Although, for you guys, for my dedicated subscribers, I'll do anything. So, uh, I just wanted to show a little more of the setup now, now that we've got it set up a little further. Uh, here you can see I've got the RT uh, mounted in the uh, docking station. You can see over here I took the battery out. And I'll just show a few things of interest here. Hopefully we get enough light on this. Let's try a little light. Is it too much light? It's ugly. I need to get better lighting. Um, so one interesting thing is there's an Ethernet port here. And here I've got the Ethernet cable with the correct military connector. And this radio, uh, you can set it up with an IP address. And that is, allows you to program it, uh, to control it remotely, and to use data modes. So uh, very useful. Uh, below that, we've got an, um, an audio. I don't know if you can see the label here. It's a little uh, audio port. It's got all kinds of audio uh, connections here. And um, so, again, I, I suspect that this would be useful in tying into, let's say, a vehicular intercom system, such as a VIC-3. Uh, etc. But I have I have not played with that or investigated it much. And there are, there are several different kinds of docking stations that uh, are available for this radio. This particular one has um, a built-in uh, telephone connection, so you can run field wire and and from the remote telephone communicate over the uh, radio. And then this is a switch that lets you select exactly what mode you want to do. I'm, I'm not exactly 100% sure on the details of that switch. Uh, so uh, this whole thing is being powered by a Harris power supply. It is a 30 watt, 28 volt power supply. And it's just very convenient for these radios and it's got plenty of juice to power a 150 watt or, uh, or more uh, radio. And don't m uh, mind the mess of wires uh, to get all that working. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's also review this. This here is the is the power amplifier. We've got this cable com this uh, cable assembly coming in as I mentioned earlier has three um, coax contacts, one for the HF uh, low power signal, the exciter signal from the RT, and the RCB, which is the serial control bus, a uh, remote uh, sorry radio control bus, uh, which you see um, come out of the amplifier here using just standard coax, standard BNC coax connectors. Very, very standard. I'll explain a little bit more about that. Uh, in addition, uh, this cable down below is power. So that connects to the 28 volts. And this cable up above uh, just runs alongside to a pair of fans, which are located here. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, behind the heat sink. Um, this, so remember, the, H, the HF in signal into this amp comes through this assembly. The HF out, which is the 150 or 100, 100 watt signal, comes out here through an end connector. Okay, so let's take a look at the ATU. Uh, here's the HF input. Uh, previously on the back, you saw, I guess I'll show it again. Uh, that is the HF output on a high voltage system. I'm using a simple um, alligator to uh, BNC for my power meter. This is a new power meter. I have no idea how accurate it is. I suspect it is not accurate and needs a tune-up. Okay, and then really to me the very interesting thing is this radio control bus, which is a Manchester encoded serial bus. Uh, appears to be operated in a... Uh, in a ring fashion, I suspect one is in and one is out. Uh, and remember, from the RT, from the radio itself, that control bus comes over a pair of coax pins, and then it comes out using standard BNC coax into here. What you'll notice is that there's no power, uh, no dedicated power, or a parallel multi-wire control conduct a multi-conductor control cable that is typical that we see typically in many of these uh, remote, um, these antenna tuners. This one is very interesting. So, you know, at first I thought, well, why did they bother? Why couldn't they just do something similar? 
And what I realized is that this whole uh, ATU is designed to be used remotely. And because of that, all, all you need is very standard, easily accessible supplies, which is three 50 ohm coax uh, cables, one of which is an end connector and the other two, which are BNC. So you can imagine you don't need any uh, a, a very long, uh, specialized multi-conductor control cable. For example, some of the Harris units require, one requires like, I don't know, something 37 pin. The other one was like eight, 10 pins. It's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so they did two things. One, they sent the power over using, I'm not sure which, but one of these connector, connectors, not sure if it's the control bus or the HF. My money would be on the HF, but I don't really know. That would be my guess. Uh, and then all the control is handled by two BNCs. So it's a very smart system, allows you to remote the antenna coupler quite a long distance. I don't know what the specs are, but you can imagine you could put it 100 feet or, or pro probably more if you had the right coax and it all would be f fine and dandy. All right, so that's, uh, that's another review of what we've got here. Now, the first step I'm gonna do is to power up just the docking station and not power up these two units just so we can see what happens and uh, et cetera. So uh, let's, let's go here and flick on the power switch. All right, maybe you can hear the fans of the power supply. Okay, now let's go ahead and turn this on. So first thing you do is here, there's a fan underneath. Oh, sorry, hold on one second. All right, my apologies. Uh, I thought I had disconnected the amp and coupler, but I did not. And so I wanted to do this uh, the right way. So here we are, just the docking station, and let's power it up. I was mentioning that you hear that there's a fan in the docking station that blows up into the radio to keep it cool. Um, hopefully you can see all this. Okay, so there you go, it's all powered up. I happen to have it on 7.150 megahertz. Uh, who knows why, I just picked that uh, of shits and giggles. And um, one nice thing that you'll notice is uh, the backlight display now stays on permanently. Thank God, because it's really hard, sometimes hard to see these LCD displays with no backlighting. So this is a welcome change, a very welcome change, makes the radio easier to use and also easier to video. Uh, so let's let's do something here. Let's the first thing I want to show is let's let's log in. If I can remember how to do that. Hopefully this is coming in clear. Uh, let me put the password in. Okay. And we go this way. And you say operate. Okay, so the, what I, the point of all this is I want to show you the power levels available to me. Um, and actually, they're not much different than the RT because uh, we've turned only the dock station on, the HF amplifier is not on. So we can go into the power setting, and you'll see here you have a lot of options, a lot of options, <laughs> tremendous number of options. One milliwatt, 500 milliwatt, one watt, two watt, five watt, 10 watt. 20 watt. Okay, so remember there's no power amplifier. This is just the capability of the RT itself. Uh, let's just pick 20 watts and that's it. So uh, not much else to show here at this time. What I'm going to do now is uh, reconnect the power for the amplifier. By the way, the amplifier power also feeds the power to the antenna coupler and then we'll take it from here. Okay, so I've turned, uh, reconnected the power to this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch this on, uh, and then I'm gonna focus on these two units so you can hear what and see what they do uh, uh, when they power on. Okay. So first, you can hear a fan here, and a very buzzy fan here, that sort of fan here, internally. Uh, you can see we've got a nice uh, power LED light. Always like to have indicators telling me what's going on. And so now let's see. Let's see, can the radio do something different than what it was doing before? Again, uh, we're going to need to log in. Oops, of course I screwed that up. Oh, 
Okay. And let's go back to the power menu. And we'll see we have new options. We still have amazing, we still have, actually the, even the low power options seem to have changed. So we don't have the 500 milliwatt anymore. We have one milliwatt, 10 watt, 20 watt, 50 watt, 100 watt, and 150 watt. Uh, so that's cool. Let's stick it on uh, 100 watts. Well, I'll tell you what, let's stick it on 150 watts. You only live once. So that's great. And let's get back to our normal operating. And what we'll do is, uh, by the way, the, the modulation I have here is upper sideband. I'm pretty sure that's upper sideband, J3 plus J3E. And we'll see uh, what we get in here. Uh, we're at 150 watts, so with some modulation, we're looking at we're looking at maybe this this top. Uh, thing. This is on 150 watts. And you'll also hear that the fan inside the coupler will run to keep everything cool. And after I uh, key off, key, uh, key up, uh, it will take a few seconds, 30 seconds or something before it turns off. So let's see what we can do. Test, test, test. This is a test. So not bad. You can see that even though this is not a, uh, this is not a peak reading meter, that it's a, an average reading meter. We're getting at least 150 watts out of that thing, assuming this is anywhere near accurate. And here you can hear the fan. Let's see. So I don't know, that, that, to me that fan doesn't sound like it's well lubricated. Um, I don't know, I don't know what these are supposed to sound like, but it sounds a little, a little harsh, a little low. Up oh, and there it is. It turned off. Okay, so this whole thing seems to work. Uh, let, let's do something different. Let us uh, change the frequency and see if we can watch it tune up. And we're also going to change. Uh, let's also change the modulation. So first, we're going to change the modulation. We're going to make it. Uh, we're going to make it CW A1A. I believe is CW. Okay, and let's change the frequency. The, the point of this is that we want to watch the antenna tuner change, you know, a retune. So let's make this, I don't know what we want to make it. Let's make it, uh, remember this is a dummy load, so it's not going to go on air. Let's make it 9330. Yes, we want the transmit to be the same as receive. Okay. Um, now, um, Let's, for one other thing, I want to go into the power setting. And you see it went down, it went to only, it went down to 100. It used to be 150. And you'll see there's no option for 150. And the reason is, is that CW, this amplifier will only allow 100 watt on CW. So pro my guess is also RIDI, RTTY, will also probably be limited to 100 watts. These continuous uh, modes probably are limited to 100 watts. Once we go back to a sideband, it will go up to 150 watts. So it's probably 100 watt uh, average and 150 watt PEP, peak envelope power. That's my guess is, the, the, I could look this up, but I don't know. Okay, so let's go back and let's hear, let's watch and hear the coupler tune up. Hopefully it, it will show something good, okay? Here we go, one, two, three. Oh, there you go. So it went round, 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 round. And you can see it eventually settled on 70, what looks like 75 watts. But again, I have no idea if this uh, meter is accurate. I really should put another meter on the one that I have, the other one I have. Yeah, but that's pretty good. 75 watts. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, that's kind of the whole system. Um, I'm not sure what else uh, I could show at this time. Um... It's very exciting. I'm considering putting this in my Land Rover as a second HF radio, uh, or I'm also thinking of putting a Sun Air in there. I haven't decided. So that's it. I, I, the last thing I'll mention is that this. Uh, a lot of people ask me where these things come from. I get my radios sort of all over the country. Uh, actually, I should say all over the world. This particular setup came from uh, a ham in Kuwait, uh, Kuwait in the Middle East, and. Um, 
you know, I get, I, so people uh, find me on my YouTube channel. They realize they have something that they might want to sell. And so they contact me. Um, it's kind of how I get most of, uh, most of this equipment and, uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, stay tuned. I hope in the, sometime in the next six months to also show a version of this doing, uh, HF and VHF and UHF all in one continu- t- continuous tuning, uh, continuous system where you just literally pick the frequency you want. doesn't matter where it is and the system will handle it, but that's, I'm sure that's many months away. Well, that, that's it. Thanks, everybody, for your assistance and your support. Uh, I'll, we'll see you again soon.